Good morning. Good morning. Is it great to worship the Lord together? It's great to be back. I missed you last week. Would you stand and join us as we worship this morning?
couple of announcements for you. How are we doing this morning? Doing well. You got me up there? No. No? No? Woo! There we go. Let's try it again. How are you guys doing this morning? There we go. Yeah, we're good. We're here. It's good to see you guys this morning. We've got a couple of things going on. Yeah, coming up in October, we have work day. Woo! It's, Woo! it's fun morning. I've been practicing that all week. We've Anyways. gone through this so many times. <laughs> we have work day, fun morning coming up October 19th. You guys should come join us for that. There's donuts. There may even be coffee. You should definitely come hang out with us and help out around the church that day. Yeah, that's going to be such a good time. Also coming up, I got this big old box here. Uh, this is an alabaster box, all right? Normally they're a little bit smaller than this, okay? But what this is, uh, we're going to be taking this this morning in the offering plates, but in two weeks we're going to collect it again. Uh, we have smaller versions of this uh, back at the hub if you want to grab one. And if you have change, um, you can put bills in there. That's totally fine, all right? We're going to collect it, and then in two weeks we're going to collect it again. Uh, and this goes to help build churches in other countries, okay? So if you want to give towards this again, even a little bit of change makes a huge difference, all right? So this morning, what we're going to do during offering, if you have alabaster for this morning, you can put it in an envelope, you can mark it alabaster and just put it in the offering plate. And then again, in two weeks, we're going to collect it uh, again. And so again, if you have change, anything like that, drop it in an alabaster box. You can grab them at the hub after service, and we'll take it in two weeks. Speaking of the hub, we didn't even introduce ourselves. My name is Dory. I'm the children's pastor. This is Harrison. He's yeah, the youth pastor. And over at the hub, we have some sign-up sheets going on. So if you want to be a part of Trunk or Treat, if your family wants to host a trunk, or if you just want to be a volunteer for that event, the event is on October 26th, and you can sign up after service over at the hub. And if you're new, come get a gift from the hub. We have new timer gifts, and you can grab that and fill out a Connect card so that we know how to follow up with you. Absolutely. Again, it's good to see you guys this morning. Uh, I'm ready to party with Jesus this morning, yeah? Stand yeah, back let's up. Yeah, let's do it. Go ahead and stand up. Let's continue to worship. So Harrison mentioned the alabaster offering. There are offering plates up here. If you are prepared to give your alabaster this week, as we sing, you can bring it forward and put it in these plates. If you're not prepared, September 13th, bring the big check. They take checks too, so... We're going to praise him anywhere this morning, amen? Sometimes you've got to dance in the darkness, sing in the darkness, well, this one don't make sense. Sometimes you've got to stand on the giant, worship from the lion's den. Sometimes you've got to welcome the one. Hi. 
that in your week? Do you praise Him wherever you're at? weekend, I, Peg and I were leading worship for an event over in Missouri. You know, sometimes you commit, you might not have ever had this happen to you, 
But sometimes I commit to doing something a year in advance, and a year later, my heart's not in the same spot it was a year ago. But God is good. Around the entire weekend, I saw areas that he was growing me, but I saw the areas he's growing you as a church body. I'd shared with a few that I was struggling to lead worship for something different than my home church. And I started getting texts on Friday. Hey, I know you're struggling. I'm praying for you. God knocked on your heart's door, and you responded to him and put good in my life. I tell you what, that's the church. And then when you listen and respond to God's knock on your heart, as you invite that person you really hesitate to invite for next week, Responding to God is the good in that situation. Amen? The gratitude goes so far when you put God first. Don't be anxious in anything, but give the gratitude and the glory to Jesus Christ. Amen? All my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs like I often do. Every song must end, but God, you never do. So I'll throw up my praise you again and again all that I have is a hallelujah hallelujah and I know it's not much I'm nothing else fit for a king except for a heart sing
song I sang in Sunday school as a kid just said God is so good God is so good he's so good to me that's the words pretty simple and when you sing those words where's God been good in this week might have been all week and it's easy to get caught up my car broke down $1,700 repair it happens Where's the good? The good was I bought the warranty and I had a friend help get us to the other vehicle we owned. The good is there. God causes people to respond all around you every week. Just where's my focus? If you put it on that God is so good, nothing else matters. It melts away. Amen? Why don't you sing that old song with me? God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. God is so good, God, He's so good, God, he, where's His good directed? He's so good to me, and you can modify it, He praise you again and again cause all that I have is a hallelujah hallelujah and I know it's not much I've got nothing else fit for a king cause all You may be seated. Let's pray. That we become stronger 
in your presence. I pray that we understand that you love us, that you, you sent your son to die for us. May we truly understand that today, that we are your handiwork, that there, we are a part of something that is bigger than us, that we get invited by you to be participants of. This morning, may it be a new morning for us. Lord, as we give, may we give with a heart that is full of joy. May we be grateful for what you have given us. May we return that to you. We give you all the praise this morning. Amen. Ushers. Well, we've got an opportunity coming this Wednesday night to have a time of fellowship. We're going to have dinner starting at 5.15, and that'll go on till, oh, a little after 6 or whenever. And after dinner, we're going to provide that down in the gym. And after that, we're going to have three opportunities to share in a class to grow spiritually and you heard me talk about that a couple of weeks ago, how we want to give opportunities for you to grow spiritually. We also want to grow together as the body of Christ. So we see that time of fellowship at supper. Number one, we get someone out of cooking. But number two, we get to share a time of fellowship together, get to know one another, and then grow spiritually. Well, I'm not going to talk about that much. I'm going to let these three come introduce themselves and talk a little bit about what they're going to be providing you in a way to grow spiritually. Good morning. Good morning. So my name is Christy DeFrades, and the class that I'm going to um, lead is called God's Strength. And um, I asked Pastor Ben if I could lead this class for two reasons. Um, the first one is I seen um, Deal or No Deal, which is a TV show, right? And um, it had, if you're not familiar with it, they have all these cases that you can pick. Um, and this specific one had a five, five one million dollar chances, okay? Because normally there's only one million dollars up there. This one had five, okay? And this lady, I had my notes on her name. So her name is Jessica Robinson. Okay, so this was aired September 1st, 2008. And she got up there and she picked case number four. Okay, that was her winning case. So she put it up by her. And um, if you haven't watched the show, so um, they have to go through all the cases up front. And then they get offers from the bank to sell their case, right? So, and, and that's the whole point of it is, did they make a good deal or not? So how much does their case hold? So when she got up there, she said, I'm going, I know what the top three cases are. That's what she said. And then she picked her number four. And she said, this is my million dollar case. Okay, and as the show progressed, um, it was a really good one. So you can still watch it, you can get on YouTube. So it's super exciting. So there, she's opening these cases and um, it's getting, they're making her these huge offers. And she was calm and she was focused. And she said, this number four is a million dollar case. And she was 100% sure. She, she, she did not waver at all. And they got down to the bottom um, two cases. So she had said that she knew what the top three cases were, right? So it got down to the, the there was two cases left. She had passed up over half a million dollars, right? She passed up all this extra money. <clears throat> and 
she went to pick her last two cases, and they were, again, the top two cases, right? And um, at the end of the show, her number four had the million dollars, okay? It was awesome. It was a fun thing to watch. But as I was watching it, her family stood by her, and they said, you got this, right? She was, she was perfectly, um, like I said, she was perfectly calm. She was good. Um, and so anyway, um, her million-dollar case, uh, that was what, that is what I want for God, okay? I want to be able to, to grab God and hold him right next to me, and I want to be calm, and I want no matter what comes my way, no matter what offers the world gives me or what things the, the world throws at me, I want to be like, I got it. I got my number one case right here, right? I'm good. I don't need anything else. Okay, that's God's strength to me. Um, the second reason is, um, is I want to be a good person, okay? I want to be a good mom. Um, I want to be a good wife. I want to be a good friend. I want to be a good sister to most of my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in order to do that, I have to have um, patience and calmness and kindness and wisdom, and I don't always have those things. Um, so I asked uh, to lead this class, and hopefully we can all uh, go through this together and um, help each other out. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to look at some of the attributes of Christ, but we're going to do four of them out of the many, 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 many. We're going to look at his self-restraint out of Matthew 4, his objectivity out of, out of John 3, John 4, his empathy out of John 11, and his grace out of John 8. Awesome. This is Larry. All right. So we have Larry and uh, Christy teaching a class, and I, my name is Ben, and I'm uh, uh, teaching one on uh, what it means to be a leader today. And I truly believe everybody that's sitting in here, you are called to be a leader. A uh, leader in your home, leader at work, leader at, in your daily life. And you can easily substitute that for disciple. All right? And so we're going to talk about some four things within what it looks like to be a leader today. And how, how to grab a hold of that and what, how you become a leader in this world that this world needs. All right? And so these are our classes that we are put together, uh, God's strength, the attributes of Jesus Christ, and what it is to be a leader and how to train to be a leader. All right? And again, my name is Pastor Ben. Come for an amazing meal. Come to, to be fed. All right? And I want you to know, as, as today we go through the sermon, man, this, just, this is perfect timing because I believe the, for us to be a church that God has called us, we should be digging a foundation that is ready to w weather any storm. And I'm not, like, I'm, I, the, the verses that we chose today, please forgive me, all right, because they're talking about firm foundation, and it has nothing to do with the storms that have happened with Helena, all right? So, uh, but it, what an example that we get to, to kind of understand within that. But, I want to encourage you to come, bring friends, um, have this opportunity to eat with them, have this opportunity to grow, all right? So we want to be a church that is using our people to further the kingdom, okay? So I'm, I, I'm hoping that you participate in that. Um, this morning, before I get started, I want you to turn to the next person next to you and tell them I'm so glad that you got to sit next to me. Did you mean it? Did you mean it? Are you glad you got to sit next to, are they got to sit next to you, right? Uh, today we're going to do some work. You ready to do some work? Okay, we got some. We got, all right. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Well, too late. <laughs> You're not going to butter me up now, all right? Uh, I, think, I think my hope is when we come together on a Sunday morning, there's a couple things that we do. First and foremost, our focus is God, 
right? We are here for his audience. He is our one and only true thing that we worry about on this Sunday morning, right? If a song messes up, if a, if a pastor just lays an egg, it is all about God no matter what. He is why we are here this morning. That's my hope, all right? That is my hope. And the other thing that I hope, too, is that we grow. That we don't just use this time to look, think about other people and what, man, if they were just here. Or they, we can even look across this and like, I hope they heard that message. I, my hope is really that we internalize this and go, okay, God, how can I use this? How can this transform me? And this morning, as we have been preparing for next Sunday, and next Sunday is bring a friend, we have saved them a seat, that our hope is that we understand that this place is welcoming to anybody and everybody that comes in to be a part of it. All right? Can we agree upon that? All right. And that, that as we do this, that we need to be ready for that. That we can't just show up on a Sunday and be like, whoa, do you see that? We, I, there's faces here I've never seen before. Uh, I don't want you leaving and go, that was cool that they were here. Do you know who it was? Like, this is our opportunity to engage with people and to be inviting. Also, next Sunday, we have a meal for everybody. All right? And as we prepare this meal, those who are veterans here, those who have been part of this church forever, this is my goal for you. That you don't worry about yourself that morning. That you come ready to serve. Let everybody eat before you. Let everybody make sure they are taken care of and that you understand the mission of this. That your mission isn't to get first in line next Sunday. Your mission is like, oh, I don't like this food or it's not for me. I want your mission to be, I want somebody to be taken care of by me on Sunday. Right? Right? That is our hope this next Sunday, all right? So if you're a veteran, if you've been part of it, or if you're just new and you're like, man, I can't wait to, to feed somebody. I can't wait to be there for them. I can't wait to host a table. I can't wait to, to engage with new people. Man, I'm, just be praying already that you have those encounters with people. And not, listen, everybody's different too, right? Everybody is different. We come from different elk we come from different thought processes, right? And there are some people, I, I want to implore you to read body language, right? Be aware of people. If they are overwhelmed by the amount of people that have come and talked to them, maybe take a step back, right? If you see that they're all alone and like nobody has talked to them, take a chance to, to step forward, engage. Guess what? Uh, one of the things I've learned in ministry, you have to learn how to carry a conversation, too, all right? They, you got to learn not to ask just the yes, no question. Be creative. Figure out how to engage. And why I'm saying all these things is because I think for us, we have to be ready, even when we step out of here, how to engage with a world that is hungry for Jesus Christ and they don't even know it, all right? And if we, I, I, I think the hardest thing for us is that we're scared to engage because we don't know what we're going to be asked. We don't know how to, what if they challenge me? What if they don't welcome me? What if we don't, it's okay. You know who will welcome you? You know who will love you? And we'll, we'll still challenge each other, trust me. But we will, we will help and lift each other up right here. Right? And guess who needs this? Your friends. The people that you've been praying about, the people that you've been thinking about, I really hope that you have been. I hope God has put people on your mind, even the ones you're like, man, I don't want to. Anybody have those? Yeah? All right. Man, God, like God has done this for a reason, that he has put them on your mind, your heart, to be praying for them, to engage with them, to invite them. Don't step away. They might not come. That's Okay. It's about us being willing and faithful to step out on that limb that God's going to use. All right? So as we move forward, well, I want to talk about some things. I want to talk about what it looks like to have a firm foundation. All right? And I started thinking about this. I've flown a plane enough in my life that I have gotten to the point that 
I, I think I talked about this jokingly last week that I would, I have my preference. I prefer the aisle seat. Uh, you know, one leg at least gets to extend for a little bit until they come with that cart and they hit you with it, right? But I don't, there's a reason I, I, I don't really care for the, the window seat, and I'm really hoping that I don't give somebody a phobia this morning of planes, but I don't know about you, but when I look out that window and I see that wing, I can't help the thoughts go, how's that staying? When we're flying up in the air and we're going like a thousand miles per hour and you just see it do this thing. You know, oh. And I have seen planes that I've got on and it looks like they put duct tape on them. Anybody seen those? Those moments? You're like, no, duct tape's not the answer. No, like I don't want to walk on a plane that I'm seeing them doing work on it right before you get on. Just me. Just one of those things. I've been on a plane. We, I was taking 2017s down to El Salvador on a mission trip. And as we got on the plane, the door broke. And they tried and tried to fix it. And I thought, don't, just let us off. We're, let's find a new plane. Please, I want the door to be don't put a screen door on it, please. Like that, I, my mind is just messed up. I know it. But I start to think about the, the things in which we ride and the things in that we participate. I, I, I used to be big on roller coasters, right? Anybody else love roller coasters? Are, 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 have you gotten to a point where you're like, no, no more for you? Yeah? Like I have gotten, I, I'll still ride them, but I'm also at that point in my life like, you start doing the loop-de-loops, and I'm like, I don't remember it. I fell asleep half the way through it. I've had, like, my world just starts to shrink, and it's not, it's not fun. I, I, we went to Kings Island last summer uh, because my daughter begged and begged and begged to go to Kings Island. It's, it's a really cool place. It's a lot of rides, right? And it's awesome. And I remember seeing an article about a ride that failed. And I thought, great, this is... Thanks. Gra glad to read that right before I go. And then the week after we left, guess what happened? Somebody got hurt on one of those rides. Uh, well, and, and it wasn't smart. The guy lost his uh, phone out in the middle of the ride. He had it on him, and he decided to jump the gate, the fence, and go grab it while the ride was going. And, of course, somebody kicked him in the head while they were riding. And... and I, those things are just not like when you get on these things and you think about the security of them, your mind just starts to wobble, right? And you just go into this stage. And I started thinking about what it looks like for people to come in to a church. And we talk about church being a place that is for the broken, the hospital, the ones that um, we are all not perfect, right? Okay, one. All right. One left. <laughs> if only Pastor knew, I am. Right? Uh, my wife's not here, so yes, we are not like, we're not perfect. All right? She's perfect in my eyes. But I know she's got her faults. And she knows mine. All right? And she still said yes. All right? But we, we talk about this being a hospital, those who are broken, those who are lost, those who are dealing with addictions, those who are dealing with life, right? Am I right? That is church. But at the same time, we should still look different from this world. And this is where we're going to talk about, a secure foundation. And it says in Matthew 7, 24 to 25, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. All right? We, let's stop here for a second. If you read scripture, if you listen to sermons, if you go to Bible studies, if you, if you are praying with God, guess what you're doing? You, you are learning what he has for you. And how to be different from this world, right? Uh, if you watched any of the news, uh, you've seen some of the devastation of a hurricane. Anybody see that? I mean, and it is, it is devastated states, not just one state. 
not just Florida, North Carolina, Tennessee. Like it just, it just kept going, right? Uh, and I lived in Bradenton, Florida for a lot of time. And there's this place right next to Bradenton called Anna Maria Island. And it was a beautiful island. Beautiful restaurants, beautiful homes, beautiful. It, is, it sits pretty much right on the water. And I always thought when a hurricane comes, they won't be here anymore. And finally a hurricane came and everything was taken away pretty much. Uh, the, all the roads, you can't see roads anymore. They have the bridge blocked off so nobody can come. All those restaurants are gone, the hotels, the homes, everything is pretty much gone. And I just started thinking about they, they could only build so far down for their foundation. Because it, they, like you keep digging, if you've been to the beach, you get to a point where you're digging, like I used to dig as a kid, and you get to the water pretty quick, right? Same as their foundation. And I started thinking about for us and what it looks like to understand that we need to continue. It should never stop to figure out how to build a firm foundation. Because storms are going to come. Right? In fact, some of you probably are already feeling storms that you are going through. Whether it is sickness, whether it is relationships, whether it is just life and bills and wondering if you're going to make it to tomorrow. Like life doesn't stop. Right? And if, if you watch news, if you watch life in, in that spectrum, it's scary. And things can fall apart immediately. And what, I, what I'm worried about for us, sometimes we become alarmist. And then we like to play the game like, well, God is definitely coming back. You watch the news, he's definitely, like, it's next week. It's got to be next week. It's got to be, the, it's, it's going to be this year. Right? And my thought process when it comes to understanding this is twofold. Don't go run and hide. Don't go run and hide. Because there is a world that needs you. If you think life is tough, even outside of your own little circle, guess what they need the most? Your strength. And the more that we grow closer in God, the more that we understand who God is in our life, you will be the steady ground that they get to walk on through the storm. You show them peace when there's chaos. You show them there's a way beyond. If you go bankrupt, you are not bankrupt for life. If you get cancer, it doesn't hold you down. If you are broken, if you go through a divorce, our God is redeeming. Right? Even though we still have storms in our life, this is also what's amazing. Like, I, I think we have projected in a, this message that the moment that you accept God, Life is going to be easy. Life is going to be perfect. Life is, like, that's the promises. He promises my desires will be fulfilled, right? He says that. But you know what that really means? The moment that you accept God in your life, do you know that there's this thing in us that God puts in us that we we discover who we are in him? And in this mess, we get to show a world, we get to show ourselves, we get to show God, we trust him with this mess. And even if this mess gets us down, we know who's got us, right? So through it, the foundations are built and continually to be built. And this is the thing, too, I think honestly, and and I've heard this before, if you pray, pray for patience, what's God going to give you? Right? Reasons to have patience. 
right? He's going to give you those things. If we build a foundation with God, guess what God's going to do with us? He's going to use us. Right? So I'm thinking about Wednesday nights and why we're doing Wednesday nights. Maybe you feel like your life just like you couldn't put up a fight right now. That if another storm comes, you're done. That maybe I need to take a break from God. God doesn't care about me. God doesn't need me. God's not using me. God, like, and I'm just exhausted. Anybody ever been there? Yeah. It's real. It's real. Do you know what you need the most in that, those times too? This. To encourage you, to help build you up, to be there for you, to tell you the truth. You know that? Truth is tough sometimes. It feels like you're beating somebody up, but the reality of truth is you care enough to say, don't go run out in traffic because you're just going to get ran over. God has a place for you. He wants you to be healthy. He wants you to be strong through these times. And healthy and strong are different from what this world says healthy, healthy and strong. You understand? Like for me, I, I have decided I am past that age of worrying about what my physique looks like. Getting to the gym all the time. Uh, making sure I can get like that strength. I want to look good, right? Uh, my hair is not cooperating. It keeps going back. It makes me mad, right? And it's getting grayer. I'm like, come on, right? <laughs> right? No, no more stuff. <laughs> Shh. All right? And it's easy to be defined by this world of successes and still crumble and fail. It is also easy to play the game where we compare. God, why is it so easy for them? They don't even have you. They've got everything. They've got all the riches. Anybody play that game? Why don't you love me enough to have that? Right? I, I've looked at my life, and I will tell you, there were years and years and years and years where I played the game. I would look at my friends, and they had a, a happy home life, and mine was broken. And I just asked God, why would you allow this? Right? And I want you to know, in that, in those times, in those areas of my life, I, un I started to understand how God was formatting me, how he was changing me, how I became dependent on God over everything else. And I stopped playing the comparison game. Right? And it also helped me understand how to forgive even when the one that did something wrong wasn't asking for forgiveness. Do you know how hard that is? It's not easy. It changed how I looked at them. It changed how I, I saw them through the eyes of God. And I want you to know that was a firm foundation being built because there was prayer. I was learning what God wanted and guess what I was putting into practice? Those attributes. When I say practice, we have to practice what God has put before us, before us, right? If you're not praying, if you're not living out God's word, if you just expect things to be good, and why do I always feel like I'm in the dumps? Why am I always feeling like God doesn't care? Do you know why? Because we are not practicing what God has put before us. You understand that? Let's look at the next part. The rain came, the, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against this house, yet it did not fall because it, it had its foundation on the rock. The rock being who? Right? Jesus. Understanding that. We can think of all the storms and why I'm preaching this this morning when it comes to inviting somebody to understand that we have reserved a seat can you imagine a church, a church full of people, a church understanding, man, I, my full confidence today is in God. 
Would you worry? Would worry battle you? Would you have confidence in going and speaking to somebody because you wouldn't, you wouldn't worry about what they're going to think, what they're going to say, what they're going to do? You're full of confidence and understanding. My God's got me, and I can step out in that. Have you ever met somebody like that? I have. They're, they're so full of joy, so full of, like, grace. They're so full of mercy. They have a different understanding of the scriptures than sometimes I do. Because they are practicing it. They go out into a world and that same persona, that same ideology, that same uh, that thing that they have, they don't see people as enemies. They don't see people as, oh, they cut me off, time to re- rear in them. They see them as opportunities to share God's love. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that wild? That is somebody that is putting the practice of understanding what God has done in their lives, reading the word, putting in, like they are patient. They are kind. They understand 1 Corinthians 13. It is not just for weddings. It is not just for, for married couples. It is actually for the church to go, this is how we are to love the world and each other. If you don't, I don't have it up here, but read it. First, First Corinthians 13 is a call for us and how to love God, each other, and this world. Are you going to be patient? Are you going to be kind? Gentle? Like these are the things, once we put them into practice, guess what we start to see and feel? Guess what? Things, wind, storms don't have you anymore. Can you imagine the, one, the spouse that you can't stand right now if you were to live this out with them? Like, they're not kind to you, but you're patient. You're loving. You go the extra mile for them. Can you imagine what your home life would look like and how that would probably change the, the, the whole atmosphere of that home? I'm not saying you guys have that, but I'm, it's a great example because you live with that person every day and Trust me, you probably get on each other's nerves. You probably do things you're like, really? Come on. You just walk by that pile of clothes? Right? Like it's easy to play that game in your mind and also spit out that frustration and that hate and that, oh, imagine if we put into the practice, even at home, what it is to be patient, to love, to be kind, to be forgiving. To go the extra mile, even if they don't deserve it, especially when they don't deserve it. Because guess what? The more we practice this, we're ready for a world that comes in and goes, I'm going to test it. I'm going to test it. And we got to be ready. Right? The dangers of a shaky foundation is this. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell like a great crash. I know people, and I've seen people, and they come and go, and there are moments that they, like, it is just devastating to them of the situation, and the, like they lose a job. They, they, like we can, can, you can figure out whatever scenario you have, and it just has crushed them. And the only thing we can do as a church is to surround them with prayer. Do our best to help them through that situation. But the reality is this. If their foundation was pulled up from the ground from the situation that they find themselves, I would ask them how much they practice what they believe. See, this is a hard truth. You see, we corporately believe God together. We worship him together. But do you know that nobody else can force you to grow with God? I cannot go to your house and be like, you're not doing it. Let's figure it out. I mean, I could, but it would be really not fun. And you would probably just shut the door in my face. Am I right? 
And I could pr- you, you could probably, even, I think more than likely, you would just placate me like, yeah, pastor, I know, I know, I know. And hopefully get me out the door and be like, all right, that guy's crazy. I don't know if I'm going back there. Right? You have your responsibility of growth spiritually is on you. You are called to build this. We are called to do it together in a way that helps do it. We are called to do the planning together. We are called, like, Wednesday nights is that cultivating of those things, right? But you do the growth of it. Belonging to God's household. Ephesians 2, 19 through 22 says this. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners or strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. Built on foundations of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. My last question for you is this. Are you a place that God's spirit dwells? Because if he's dwelling, guess what he's doing? He's working. We, we've talked about it. Anybody perfect in here? No. Right? It's the honest, easy answer. Should we be striving to be closer to God, which is perfection? Absolutely. Absolutely. I need to love better. I need to forgive better. I need to lead better. I need to see people better. Do you know what that means? Like that, that's probably the one thing that I, I, I'm asking God to work on me. I need to see where they need help. I need to see others where they need to hear his voice and I need to be that voice. I need to see the people that are, are lost. I need to see the ones that have needs and fill those needs without even people need. Like I don't need a post about it. It is just between me and God how to love them through this. Do you understand that? Like, this is what you are called to do. When we come together, we are, my hope is this, that we are building a foundation every Sunday that gets closer and closer in strength. And we don't, we don't walk out of here with worries because we've laid him at his feet. And whatever comes our way Monday, we're ready to go. We're ready to work. We know God's got this. We know that he has me. I can do this. By Friday, you're like, man, I don't know if I can do this. But my hope is, is Monday through Friday, you're not just banking on Sunday to be the refueling of this. Monday through Friday through Saturday, we have been praying. We have been seeking God's voice. We have been seeking his understanding with every situation we find. So learning how to love your spouse is an everyday thing. Learning how to love your kids is an everyday thing. Learning how to love coworkers is an everyday thing. Life can be very, very monotonous when we don't think about it in this way. You understand what that means? I get up, I do my job, I go home, I make dinner, I I do whatever chores, and I go to bed, and I press repeat. Anybody feel like they live that? Just me? Sometimes? Anybody else? Because there have been times that 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 has become my thought process, and I want you to know, when I am not close and I'm not allowing God to use me, I look at days as just as another day. When God is using me, guess what what happens? I see where he wants me to be used by him. And the storms are just opportunities to show God off. What he can do, what he has done, and how he is working. Can we live that way? You see, we need to be a church when we invite people into it, is understanding, yes, I, I am... I am a mess, but with God, I have a firm foundation of understanding how he's going to use this mess to glorify him. And I want in full confidence, like in my mess, God has made this perfect. 
in my mess, God uses this. And so these moments I stand up here and I mispronounce things, I, miss, I, I missed a point, I, I do think that God still uses it. Right? It is easy to be defined by things of this world, right? If you've been through bankruptcy, what are you considered? Probably a failure. Right? If you got divorced, you probably feel like you're a failure. If you, if you didn't graduate from high school, you probably feel like a failure. I'm telling you right now, God redefines everything in that moment because, listen, he flips this world upside down and he uses the losers to glorify his kingdom. Do you understand? And imagine a bunch, I, this sounds so bad, imagine a bunch of losers understand my God is bigger than me and he uses me and I, I glorify him and I'm not, I'm not defined by my loserdom, I'm defined by what God does through this loser. And in it, yeah, I may have failed in, by the world standards, but God's got me. And it's not going to hold me down because I, I, I know who's in the boat with me in this storm. He may be sleeping right now. That's how much he trusts me. Can you imagine that? Church. When we invite people into our church, when they, when they come around with us, we have a twofold. We are not perfect. But boy, are we striving for, for perfection. I am hungry to learn his word. I'm hungry to practice what he is preaching in my life. Not, I didn't say me. What God is preaching in my life. I am hungry to do and be what God sees in me. Are you there? Do you want that? I can't force it out of you. We can offer opportunities. But you've got to take the step. So as we invite people a part of this, there's two things to understand. We need to be a church that understands where our foundation is built. That's Jesus. And in him, he takes this and makes it new. And makes it useful for his kingdom. Are you ready for that? Stand with me, church. Today, as you exit, the, the ushers have uh, cards, I believe. Um, you guys got that, those cards? Yeah, all right, perfect. Uh, and it has dates and times. Uh, it's an invite for our, our lunch next Sunday. Take as many as you can you want, all right? This is our goal, not to have these seats filled. This is our goal to be the people that Christ has called us and have the opportunity to share that when storms are coming, who's got us and who's got them? It is our Redeemer. It is the one that loves us so much that died on a cross for us. That when he did that, he took this, this goofy kid He's taken you and he's turned you into what you are today. And he wants to use you for their story. He wants to use you to show them there's a foundation that is beyond this world, beyond the riches, beyond the successes, beyond our own failures that he, he can redeem. And all he cares about is you personally loves you right down to your core. Church, take these invites and share them with the people that God has been putting on your heart. Please do. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your opportunity to be in your presence. Thank you for your grace. We, we pray for next Sunday. May it be an opportunity to share your grace, your mercy. May we build relationships. May our foundation be shown that we are growing in you. We may be the hospital for the sick, but we are also the hospital that is transforming people because of what you are doing in our lives. We are striving. 
we are hungry. We want to be the disciples that you have called us to be. Give us the, the strength. Help us alleviate the worries of this world. May we bring peace where we come, wherever we go. May we show there's a way through you. We give you all the praise this morning. And we do this in your heavenly name. Amen. You're dismissed.